Well, welcome boys and girls to J. Crew. This is a beautiful day that the Lord has made and we are going to rejoice and be glad therein. This is the first Sunday in 2021. The first Sunday in 2021. God has kept us through 2020 and we are now seeing 2021. And as we go into 2021, I pray to God that you have resolved that your 2021 is going to be like none other year. That you're going to do all that you can to bring honor, to bring glory to Almighty God. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer, and then we go further into our service. Father, we thank you. We thank you for who you are. We thank you for just your keeping power, dear Lord. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for just your love and all that you have done to care for us, dear Lord, through 2020. And as we enter into 2021, dear Lord, I pray that you would bless us. Fill our hearts with your Holy Spirit, dear Lord, that every step that we make will be a step with your Holy Spirit, that what will come out of our our lives will be love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and self-control, dear Lord, that we will let our light shine, that we will be the salt of this earth, dear Heavenly Father, that when the world see us, they see Jesus. Lord, we thank you. We love you. We adore you. Bless this worship. And I pray that everything that we do will bring a smile upon your face and be pleasing and acceptable unto you and be a blessing even to those who are participating. We love you. We love you. We love you. Thank you for 2021. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so boys and girls, what we're going to do first is I'm going to share with you a video. Before we go into our Lord's Supper, I want to share this, this video. It's a story of sacrifice. It's a story of sacrifice, and I will summarize the video at the end, okay? But I want you to watch the video. It's a fairly long. It's about eight minutes, and I want you to pay attention to the whole story. Read the captions so you can follow along with the story, and oh, it's going to be a blessing unto you. And as it becomes a blessing, it gives you an understanding as to the sacrifice that God has made for each one of us so that we can have the hope of eternal life. And then we're going to go on into the Lord's Supper so that we can remember the death, the burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Enjoy the video.
Wow, boys and girls, what that is a powerful, powerful video that shows a major choice that this man, this bridge master had to make. He either had to choose to actually save the lives of all of the people who were on the train or save his son. He could not save both. And he chose to save all of the lives on the train. And how hurtful, how painful that really was. But he did it out of love. And oh, what a sacrifice. And it's a similar sacrifice that our God made for each one of us. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God so loved each one of us. He could just have closed his eyes and allowed us to actually suffer the penalty for our sins, which is death. But instead of him doing so, he gave up his one and only son. And oh, what a painful thing it was. But he did it because of his love for you and his love for me. And what his desire is, is for us to actually partake of the Lord's Supper and remembrance of the death, the burial, and the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So we are going to go into prayer and we are going to... um to partake of the bro the, bro the bread which represents the broken body of God, I mean of Jesus, and the fruit of the vine, the grape juice, which represents the blood that Jesus shed on the cross to cleanse our souls of all of our sins. Let us pray. Father, we thank you. We thank you for the sacrifice of which you made, dear Lord, and in sending your only son, Jesus, to die for all of our sins. And Father, we, um, we can't even imagine the pain that you experienced when your son took on all of the sins of the world and you had to turn away from him. Oh, what hurt, what pain. But at the same time, what love that you have for each one of us. And all you ask us to do is to do this in remembrance of you. So as we partake of the Lord's Supper, I pray that we will reflect back on the sacrifice that Jesus made, the beating that he endured, the crucifixion that he endured, the death and his resurrection, and that we will celebrate. For if it wasn't for his sacrifice, we would have no hope of eternal life. We love you. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Okay, so boys and girls, what we're going to do is we are going to um, first start by partaking of the bread. The bread represents the broken body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he was whipped, he was beaten. Oh my gosh, um, traditionally they beat, um, beat, beat individuals, maybe 39 lashes from the crown of his head to the sole of his feet. Oh, beat, beat him into a pulp, but he could not die by the beating because he had to die on the cross. They put a crown of thorns on his head, they pressed them on his head, that probably burst some of the blood vessels in his and his skull, I mean, I mean, in his um, on his head. Oh my gosh! And he said, "Do this in remembrance of him, because of his love for you, and his love for me." Let us all eat together. And this fruit of the vine, which is a grape juice, it represents the blood of our Savior Jesus Christ. And his blood shed on the cross for our sins, and our faith in Jesus causes. His blood to cleanse our souls of all the sins we've ever committed. And that is our ticket into the kingdom of heaven. It's the blood of Jesus Christ. And he wants us to do this in remembrance of him. Let us remember his crucifixion as we partake of the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. But boys and girls, may God bless you. May God keep you as we get ready now to go into the lesson for today. So go get your Bibles, go get something to write on and something to write with. Amen. Amen. All right, boys and girls, now we are getting ready to go into the word for today, okay? And as we get ready to go into the word for today, I want to encourage you, if you haven't already done so, to go get your Bibles. We will be using our Bibles, and there are a number of scriptures that I'll be referencing from the Bible. So please go get your Bibles. And also, if you do not have something to write with, um, write on, please go get something to write on to write with, because we will encourage you to take some notes, okay? Not just sit and listen, but to 
actually follow along by reading the word, by writing some of the things that we say, and some of the things that you may see on the screen, okay? So I want to encourage you to do so, so that you will retain some of the things that we say today and go out and put it into practice. For God's desire is that when the word is preached, that you go out and bear much fruit. Amen? Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father, we thank you. We thank you for your word, dear Lord. And as we get ready to go into your word today, I pray that you will bless the hearts of the hearers, dear Heavenly Father. Bless them with the desire, dear Lord, to allow the seed of your word to enter into their hearts. And that, Lord, um, it will later bear much fruit as each of us put into practice those things of which you desire of us. We love you. We adore you. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your protection. We thank you for your keeping power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So boys and girls, what we're going to do first is um, I want to share the title of today's lesson. Today's lesson is Just Like Jesus, Living just like Jesus, living just like Jesus. That is the title of today's lesson, is Living Just Like Jesus. And we'll be going into 2 Peter chapter 1, okay? 2 Peter chapter 1 will be our main text, and then there will be other scriptures that we'll be referencing throughout the rest of the Bible study for today. And we always have a subtitle. And the subtitle for today's lesson is being a fruitful tree, living like Jesus to be a fruitful tree. So let me go back to the beginning. So the title of today's lesson is Living Just Like Jesus. And the subtitle is Being a Fruitful Tree. For if we are being a fruitful tree, we are most definitely are living just like Jesus. Amen. So I want to first start with a quick illustration before we go into the word for today about this fruitfulness. Let's say, for example, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but um, I have in my hand a seed, okay? And this is an apple seed. Let's say that this is an apple seed. And this apple seed will do no good in my hand, correct? It will do no good in my hand. It will never produce an apple, it will never produce a tree to produce an apple. But if I put this seed in the ground and I nurture this seed, I give it this proper um, water, I give it this proper, make sure it gets the sunshine that it needs and all, eventually what's going to happen, it's going to produce fruit. But it cannot produce fruit it will not be effective. The seed will not be effective unless there's effort and there is work that is done to cause this seed to produce fruit. In other words, it will never ever become an apple tree to produce apples unless we put the effort into it so that it can produce fruit. Amen? And just like this, just as this seed, needs work in order to produce fruit, the same with each one of us, each one of us. And that's what we're going to talk about today. I'm going to read to you the passage in 1 Peter chapter, chapter 1 and beginning in verse number 5. Before I do so, I want to share this with you. Last week, we talked about epistles. And what epistles are, are uh, letters. These are letters that the apostles write or uh, wrote in order to encourage the Christians to fight the good fight of faith, encouraging them, especially when they're going through persecution and trials and tribulations, that they hang in there. And so Peter, last week we talked about Peter's first letter, and his first letter, a part of his first letter was to encourage the saints to be holy, to be holy as Christ is holy. And how we be holy is by living a godly life, letting our light shine and being the salt of the earth. And so this week, Peter wrote a second. We're going to talk about the second letter that Peter wrote. And the second letter that Peter wrote, it encourages the saints to be fruitful, to be fruitful. Okay, and that is what we're going to talk about today is what it means to be fruitful in the kingdom of heaven. For this is what Peter says in 1 Peter, I mean, 2 Peter chapter 1, beginning in verse 
number five. This is what he says. He says, for this re very reason, make every effort to add to your faith, goodness, and to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, perseverance, and to perseverance, godliness, and to godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affections, love. For if you possess these qualities in increasing measure, they will keep you from being ineffective and unproductive in your knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. As we said, the title of today's lesson is Living Just Like Jesus. And to live just like Jesus, we must be fruitful trees. And to be fruitful trees, what Peter is encouraging us to do is to add to our faith. We're going to have to add to our faith, not just believe in God and think that is it, but put forth the effort. He says, make every effort to add to your faith these other qualities. And if we add to our faith these other qualities on a regular basis, then we will always be fruitful. We will always be bearing good fruit for the glory and honor of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. And so what we want to do now is that we are going to go through each one of those qualities because we want you to understand what these qualities are that makes us a fruitful tree. What are the qualities that makes us a fruitful tree? Not just believing in Jesus Christ as our Savior and Lord. That is the beginning. But Peter says we're going to have to add to our faith. And so what he wants us to add to our faith first is goodness. And so if you go to Galatians chapter 6, and verse number 10, it tells us what he means by adding to our faith goodness. This is what the word of the Lord says. It says, therefore, as we have opportunity, let us do good to all people, especially to those who belong to the family of believers. In other words, when opportunity knocks on the door for us to do good towards our neighbors and even towards the saints in, in the kingdom of God, let us not turn away. Let us continually do good. So it says, add to your faith goodness. And then it says to add to your goodness knowledge. Add to goodness knowledge. And in 2 Timothy chapter 2 and verse number 15, this is what the word of the Lord says. He says to study, to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth. In other words, what the word of God is telling us to do is to study his word, meditate upon his word day and night so that we can be productive. So add to your faith, goodness and to goodness, knowledge. And then not only to not, but you understand what the will of God is. He says, add to knowledge, self-control. For this is what the word says in Titus chapter 2 and verse number 11. It says, For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. It teaches us to say no to ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled and upright and godly lives in the present age. In other words, once we have retained that knowledge, what God is, the word of God is telling us to do is to say no to ungodliness. How do we know what is ungodly? Because we've been studying the word of God to show ourselves approved, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed. But then it also tells us to walk and live in self-control, upright lives, godly lives in this present age. So what we're doing is just we're building upon our faith. So we add to our faith what? Goodness. And we add to what? Goodness. Knowledge. And to knowledge, self-control. And to self-control, the Lord says to add perseverance. Because sometimes when we understand the word of God and we want to continue to strive to do the will of God, we get tired. We get weary. And we want to quit. But the word of God tells us not to quit, but to persevere. Persevere. Because the Bible tells us in James chapter 1 and verse number 4, here's what happens. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, 
not lacking anything. In other words, the more that we persevere, the more we grow stronger in our faith in Almighty God. And the stronger we grow, we growing up and maturing and becoming more complete as disciples of our Savior, Jesus Christ. You see how this is all working out, how we becoming more and more fruitful. And then it says, add not only to persevere, add to perseverance, godliness, add to perseverance, godliness. That means that we are going to lead a godly life, avoiding those things that actually causes us to sin and to strive to live the good godly life. And the Bible says in Psalm, in, um, in 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 6, it says this, but godliness with contentment is great gain. Godliness with contentment is great gain gain. In other words, living a godly life, depending upon Almighty God, avoiding those things that are caused um, displeasure unto the Lord, and being happy with what we have is the greatest gain. And that is what's going to make us more and more fruitful. Amen? Amen. And then it says to add to godliness mutual affection. Some call it brotherly love. Some call it brotherly affection. And this affection basically is us actually loving on our neighbors, loving on our neighbors. The Bible says in Psalms 133 and verse number one, it says, how good and pleasant it is for God's people to live in unity. That means that we love on one another. That means we're putting up with one another. That means we're, we're patient with one another. That means if the brother or sister we find out is in need, we go out and we do what we can possibly do to help one another. That is what that is all about. And so we want to actually make that a part of our building up upon our faith so that we can be fruitful and effective. Amen. And then it says, add to mutual affection, love. What is love? The Bible says that love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy. It does not boast. It is not proud. It, it does not dishonor others. It is not self-seeking. It is not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrong. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects. It always trusts. It always hopes. It always perseveres. And this is coming from 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and verse, beginning in verse number four. And there's a reason why love is placed at the root of this fruitful tree that we want to become. Because the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians as well, chapter 13, verses one through three, it tells us that if we do not have love, we can do all of these other things, but if we do not have love, we gain nothing, we are nothing. For here's what the word of the Lord says. It says, if we speak with the tongues of men and of angels, but do not have love, I am only a resounding gong or a clanging cymbal. If I have the gift of prophecy and can fathom all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have the faith that can move mountains, but I do not have love, I am nothing. If I have, give all I possess to the poor and I give over my body to hardship, that I may boast, but do not have love, I gain nothing. So that is why we have love at the root. Love is what binds everything else together to make us that true fruitful tree. It's sort of like when we plant a, when we plant a seed. When we plant a seed into the ground and begin to start nurturing that, that seed, the first thing that happens with the seed is the seed begins to produce roots. 
before it actually go and break through the ground it per and become that trunk and then the rest of the tree is stored by producing roots and the roots are what give the ability or the nurturance and all that is necessary to build up the rest of the tree amen so that is why the root is so important and that is why love is so important because it's love we being driven by love that causes us to do good, that causes us to study the word of God, that causes us to live a self-controlled life, that causes us to avoid sinfulness and live godliness, that causes us to show mutual affection, that causes us to just bond with one another, build up one another, persevere when the going gets tough. All of that happens from one source, and that source is L-O-V-E. So we do this. What is that? Why this is so important? The Bible tells us why it's so important. In verse um, 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse number 8, it says this. For if we possess these qualities and increasing measure, then we, they will keep us from being ineffective and unproductive and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. In other words, if we're going to live like Jesus and we grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Savior Jesus Christ, then we need to actually, um, what's the word, put forth the effort so that we can grow continually, that we will increase in, our, in these qualities so that we can be productive. That means we produce fruit that we can be effective, that means that we are drawing others to our Savior Jesus Christ to the honor and glory of Almighty God. I want to be a fruitful tree. And I pray that that is your desire, to want to be a fruitful tree. And to be that fruitful tree, we have to put forth the effort. We cannot just watch and look and read or, or whatnot and not do anything with our faith. Just say we believe in Jesus is a start, but that is not where we stop. We continually add to our faith, what? Goodness. Add to goodness, knowledge, and to knowledge, self-control, and to self-control, godliness. I mean, perseverance is the perseverance, godliness, and godliness, mutual affection, and to mutual affection, love. And we will always be productive. And not only will we begin to start bearing fruit, we will begin to start bearing much fruit because as we see the effectiveness of adding day in and day out to our faith, when we see that, we want to do more. We want to strive daily. We want to put forth more effort because the more effort we put forth, the more we're going to grow. The less effort we put forth, the less we're going to grow. So I want to pray and I encourage every one of you Make it your goal to put forth the best effort that you possibly can to grow and add to your faith in Jesus Christ all of these other qualities so that you could be effective and productive in the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. And young folks, we think sometimes we think that um, we're too young to actually be effective and productive. No, you can still add to your faith and goodness. You can still add to your faith knowledge. You can still add to your faith self-control. You can add to your faith um, perseverance. That means not giving up. And you can add to your faith godliness. That means avoiding the sinful things and doing the right things. You can add to your faith uh, mutual affection. That means loving on other individuals that are in need. And you can add to your faith love, which God has given to each of us so that we can be just like Jesus. Amen. Amen. So if you are out there today and you're one of those individuals who would like to actually begin the first step, the first step is faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. And you have never done so before. And you would like to put your faith in Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord. I want to encourage you to contact us. Contact us by texting the number down, on, down below or actually going to, that, to the web page down below. 
and contact us so that we can reach back out to you and reach not only out to you, but actually share with you how you can start the process of living the life of Jesus Christ. And it starts with faith in him as your savior and as your Lord. Amen. And that is the purpose, often the purpose of our faith. For God desires each one of us to be saved. That's our souls to be cleansed with the blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ, so that we will have a home in eternal, in, in, in all eternity. But then also he wants us to be effective and productive while we're here on this earth. And it starts with our faith. So please contact us. Amen. Amen. Let us go to our Heavenly Father in prayer. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for your word, dear Lord. We thank you for just encouraging us to put forth the effort to pour into, pour into our faith all of these other qualities and increase in measure so that we can be productive and so that we can be effective as we try to live like our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord, you have given us your Holy Spirit that gives us the strength to do so. And Lord, we pray that we will just make it a priority in our lives to to, 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 to mold and to shape our faith so that it can be a benefit in the kingdom of heaven. Lord, bless the children. I pray that something has been said that has encouraged them. And I pray that they will take what they've learned today and go out and put it into practice, that they were put into practice goodness, that they were put into practice knowledge, that they were put into practice self-control and perseverance, that they were put into practice um, just mutual affection, dear Heavenly Father, and godliness, and put into practice love. Oh, Lord, what a world this would be if we make that a priority in all of our lives, seeking your kingdom and your righteousness first. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, boys and girls, may God bless you and may God keep you. You stay safe. And until we meet again, I pray that Tom, you will take something that you learned today and put it into practice. Amen. Amen.